Let's take a look at a little insect zapper. This is the traditional lantern type thing, runs off the main supply, and it has the two spiral wires inside with a high voltage across them. And it has a fluorescent tube, a traditional UVA fluorescent tube to attract the insects. Um, the warnings are just solid. There's a whole book telling you not to let babies play with it and how dangerous the high voltage is. It also tells you not to short out the wires, but to be honest, it's not that exciting when you short them out. It says it will damage the unit if you leave them shorted out for too long. So I suppose better not do that. But it's very tame. Now, initially I was hoping this was going to be using a high frequency traditional electronic ballast for the tube, but... If we take a look at the power monitor here, we can see that the power is roughly about 4 watts and the power factor is just 0 0.120. 120. It's wavering up down 1 point, 0 0.122, let's say, as an average value, which is extremely low. It makes me wonder if they're using a capacitive dropper for the tube. I hope they're not, because that's usually a bit disastrous for the tubes. Let's open it up. Let's discharge it first before I get zappy poos off it. So I shall grab my screwdriver and short the things. It kind of self-discharged. I get the feeling that this is all playing it a bit safe. What about this? Does it nope, nope, tingle off that? That's good. Nice thick rubber cable on it. That's quite good. Uh, you can unscrew the bottom to get the flies out if they don't just stick to the grid as they usually do. And there's a little brush in the bottom for poking through and brushing all the things clear with the power off. Let's open this up. I wonder if the tube is changeable. Where's a suitable screwdriver? Here's a suitable screwdriver. And I notice that this is using nuts and bolts to actually hold this together, which is unusual, not just self-tappers. Maybe it's just they consider that stronger. I think they're M3. Let's get this one out. And see if the circuit board is exciting. Others that I've taken apart contained a voltage multiplier for the high voltage. Just a very simple, um, basically two diodes, two capacitors, charging the capacitors up to peak mains voltage, but one positive and one negative, so it got a nice high voltage. That's what it might be in here. Usually spicier, though, that when you actually do poke a screwdriver and it makes quite a distinct pop. I do wonder how likely it is that the insects are just going to short this out and it's going to stop working. Okay. Double check. Is that sure? It's, uh, yep, yep, it's dead. Lovely. Well, here's the circuit board. This is a bit we're interested in. Oh, this is not convenient. I shall put the case out the way here. And well, the circuit board is not showing an electronic power supply for the LEDs. Right, tell you what, I shall... Oh, it's got a starter in it. That's odd. Right, tell you what, I shall take this out and we shall explore it and see what's in the circuitry. Right, one moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I'll zoom down just a tiny bit on this. Okie dokie. Right, there's two distinct bits of circuitry. There's an incoming fuse on the live supply, and then there's two capacitors in parallel, one microfarad and 0.56 microfarad as the ballast for the fluorescent tube. They're in parallel, and then there's a couple of current limiting resistors to limit the peak spike current through the tube, which is a bit of an issue when you're using capacitors for driving fluorescent tubes. Then there is a classic gas discharge starter. It's got uh, two electrodes in it. One of them has a flexible biometallic strip on it. And when it uh, initially, when you turn it on, the if the tube's not lit, the gas will glow. It will heat up the biometallic strip and it will eventually close and short out. When it does that, it heats up the electrodes. It shorts out the tube effectively, heats up the electrodes at the end. And then because this is uh, now cooling down, because the gas discharge has been short-circuited, it opens up again, and uh, it, hopefully it will strike the tube. If it doesn't, it will have another go. There is a little tiny capacitor here, uh, common inside starters, just for filtering the noise from that, and possibly to suppress sparks to a degree from the uh, biometallic strip, though that in itself will potentially add a little current pulse. 
The rest of the circuitry, we've got a 100 nanofarad filter capacitor with a discharge resistor across it. That's just for electrical noise filtering. A couple of resistors in parallel and then a voltage multiplier uh, leading to the two output electrodes. And we've got one, two and tucked behind here, three 10 mega ohm resistors in series as a discharge safety device for discharging the uh, capacitor. Uh, if you want to see the other side of the circuit board, before I show you the schematic, here is the other side of the circuit board if you wish to play along at home, as they say. I've flipped it over for your ease of reverse engineering. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic. I'll zoom further down onto this. It's a bit weird, in a way. All of it's a bit weird. Suppose that's cost optimization for you. Let's start off with the tube driver. The fuse on the incoming live supply, we've got the two capacitors and a discharge resistor, 560k, and then we've got two uh, 100 ohm resistors in parallel to give 50 ohms to limit peak current through the tube. Uh, because if you turn it on, um, well, even on every half cycle when it strikes, you'll end up with a little pulse of current. And I will say I ran it for a while, and the ends didn't blacken. This is usually a good thing because uh, if you get if that wasn't there or you've got bad circuitry, the end of the tube will blacken quite notably. There's the starter and its little filter capacitor. I measured it at five point one nanofarad across that, and uh, the principle is the capacitors here limit the current, limiting peak current. Uh, the heaters at the end of the electrode. If the tube isn't lit, starter closes, um, and it. Uh, heats these two electrodes, brings them up to their emissive state, and then when it opens again, hopefully the current can strike across. If it doesn't, it will keep trying to do that. Here is the filter capacitor with 390k resistor across at 100 nanofarad, 390k. Why didn't they just use another 560k? Because that would have minimised the number of components you needed. There is the current limiting to the high voltage section. They've got two 68k resistors in parallel to give 34k. And it's worth mentioning that even if you did short the grid out. Even if you shorted from here to here, those resistors would be within their ratings. So I don't know where they get the burning out thing from. Strange, maybe just left over from previous instructions. But there is a three-stage voltage multiplier, quite an odd one. Uh, we've got the classic voltage doubler here where this one will charge that capacitor up to peak mains voltage. And then when the sine wave change polarity, it'll kind of push it out charge this capacitor uh, but we've, this also has a, another capacitor which is uh, being reverse charged by this diode so you end up sort of like a positive voltage here and a double negative voltage here basically um, and then there's the three discharge resistor across it and the low value of the capacitors of why that was just really ungratifying it wasn't very poppy and sparky at all the GP Chinese ones tend to just basically have this arrangement with fat capacitors and then the spark gap straight across it, so it makes a proper bang when you short it out. But this is all very tame and controlled. Uh, something else worth mentioning. The tube is not easy to change in this. Well, not to norms. To us, it's absolutely fine. Let me just grab that. Here's the high voltage grid around the tube. And if you were to uh, take the bottom off this, let's see if I can brighten this image up just a little tad and... Focus up to a more sensible height. If you were to undo these two screws, I'm just looking for my screwdriver. What have I done with my screwdriver? There it is. So if you were to take these two screws out to reveal the tube, then theoretically, after you've popped that off, I don't recommend trying to... Actually, I don't think you get any choice here. You're going to have to pop the whole bottom off like this. And it is got to uh, a socket for the tube. And then theoretically you can unplug the tube, but it will be a complete nightmare to get back on again. That's why they say not recommended. So only for those of us with the skills. And it does say um, the lamp in this appliance cannot be replaced. Scrap the appliance when the lamps cease to operate. Well, that's charming. Although having said that, the insect attracting lamps, they do reduce in efficiency over time, usually because they're overdriven. This one's not being overdriven. This is a, is this a six inch tube? It's such a long time since I've, I've used fluorescent blubs. Hmm, it's quite a short tube. Five inch. 
do we just say roughly four four inch actually active area tube okay for what whatever it is quite a low power tube but if you were desperate you could replace it yourself um that's the thing but but not for normal people however uh, that is it the little insect zapper very basic very cheaply made not that expensive in the shop anyway but ultimately a disposable item but i suppose because it's got a proper uva tube and the zapping grid it probably will do the job and will zap those insects for you